it's the um, start of a new year, and that's what we're talking about up here is what we can do in January as far as gardening is concerned. And believe it or not, there are a few things. Not a whole lot. It's not like going out and sweating in the dirt and digging up the dirt, but it's still at the same time there are things we can, we can do. So gardening in January 2019. Clean, heavily encrusted pots. Uh, this is something you can do in the garage, or if it's a halfway warm day, you can get out and do that. Deposit removed, rinse the pots, clear water, soak in a solution of one gallon of water to which one cup of bleach has been added. This helps to sanitize in case there are some uh, <clears throat> disease uh, that happens to be in that pot, pot that would probably kill it and, and might infect, if, if it's still there, it might infect a, a something that you're going to put back into that pot in the coming year. Some plants sensitive to fluoride and chlorine in tap water should stand overnight to allow these gases to dis dissipate before you put them on plants. Also, if you're going to do house plants, and this may be on a little later, I may be getting ahead of myself, but uh, house plants, if you're going to water them, uh, use rainwater if you can collect it. If you can't, pick up, collect the water in a container or someone uh, and let the gases again dissipate. It also allows the water to become warm and not put cold water on an indoor plant. This kind of kind of screws up their roots and they have to stop and think and what am I why am I cold? You know. So if you can do that, <clears throat> it would be a, a lot better. Here, you can see the little aphids here on, on the stem. And uh, they will you primarily see these in the in the spring and the summer. But if your plants have been outside and you bring them in for the winter time, you might be bringing them inside. And if they get there on one plant, they're going to get on the second plant or the third plant or all the plants you've got in the house. So if you want to dust off, leave them. Uh, if you want to get rid of those aphids, basically you can take them and put them, get you into the kitchen sink, get some cold water, run them through, get it warm with a little bit of warm water and wash them off. That's as simple as you can do. You don't have to go through all the, the chemicals to try to kill them or get rid of them. You can just basically wash them off. If they appear, if they may have laid some eggs and they hatch and some more appear, all you have to do is wash them off. You don't have to go through the process of using some type of insecticide to kill them because they will just wash off. Set the pots, humid living house plants on trays filled with pebbles. <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> my wife has a few plants that do like to be uh, a little moisture. So we've got a tray, basically it was a cookie tray. And we went and got some little sand, little pebbles that are all pea-sized, put them in the tray, put some water in it, and it'll last for three or four to five days. So that evaporation will help those plants. Wash all the house plants, allow the leaves to gather light more efficiently. <clears throat> the dust on the leaves doesn't let the light get to them and work. Set the pots in human living. Okay, pots should sit on pebbles, not in the water. Allow tap water to room temperature before using on the house plants. Uh, spider mites is another problem you may be bringing inside. Uh, and you can see over here, there's a little, looks like a spider web, and that's what they're called. <clears throat> they're spider mites, and this will, they can bring them inside as well as, as aphids. Um, but uh, Washing does not get rid of the, of the, the spider mites as well as, as the uh, aphids because of this web. They can get down that web and they can stay there. So uh, fluffy white mealy, mealy bugs, and you can see them on the, on the plant. These can be washed off just like the, the aphids could. Killed with touching them with the cottons and alcohol. That's a simple way or wash them up. Check storage summer bulbs like your dahlias, or your cannas, gladiolus that you they do, maybe you dug them up in the fall, and are trying to save them over and put them in a, a bag and saving them in the garage over the winter time. Going to put them out again in the spring. Check them to see if they're rotting or are, are drying out. If they're drying out, there's not much you can do. If they're rotting, just throw them away. And you can start over with something else. Set them outside where it's when it's cold. Bury them under leaves, transplant them in the garden with time, make an inventory of plants in your landscape, and make a location note of their location and past performance. Plan changes on paper. This is one of the best ideas that you can do is 
in January. Well, if, it's better if you have gone out in the spring or the summer and taken some pictures. Go out and take pictures and make a rough sketch of where these plants are and refer them back to those pictures. And then in January, say, okay, it's time for me to start thinking about spring. Then you can go back to your pictures and your notes that you made during uh, last year and say, I need to get rid of this one. If, if, it, if it's a, a shrub or something, you can dig it up and put it in the trash. Or if it's a, a bulb or something, you can either dig it up and put it in the trash also. If it, it's, if it's where you would like for it to be, just leave it. Daffodils and gladiolas and those type of things will stay and do well just by staying in the, uh, in the ground. Don't fret over emerging spring flowering bulbs such as tulips, daffodils. I think I have daffodils already beginning to show. Uh, they may be only about so high in the ground, but like it says here, uh, they have an antifreeze kind of built into the plant to where they, uh, they'll fine, they'll be fine. They can get down to the zero and it's still not gonna be a problem. Pansies, violas, take temperatures down to 30 and they will actually go a little bit lower than that. Uh, if it gets down into the 20s, maybe the upper teens, they will do okay. They may get kind of burned back and they may not do that well, uh, but give them a few days and they will recover and be back like you'd like for them to be. If you're expecting 10 or more nights, the temperature is below 30, cover your plants with newspapers, buckets, old sheet or something of that nature. <laughs> old Christmas trees can, can be used, you know, you can see here, the string garlands, peanuts, popcorn, cranberries, fruit out here and the birds will come and it's, you know, they like, like to eat in the wintertime as well. <clears throat> Seed, nursery catalogs. I have gotten about a stack about so, so thick already. And there are a lot of plants, a lot of things that are new that you may be interested in. I'll bring the catalogs with me and we'll go over uh, what we're gonna be talking about. But if you don't get your bulbs planted before the ground froze, plant them as soon as you can in peat pots place the pots in flats and then set them out stores and you can bury them under the leaves and then basically put them in the ground when the soil becomes a little bit less frozen or a little bit warmer. It's time to start broccoli and cabbage if you're gonna do garden plants. It's time to start them in pots now so that you can set them out when the weather gets warm, probably the latter part of February. These are cold crops they will take the, the, the cold temperatures, they will take frost and freezing, whereas tomatoes and green beans don't. But these plants are cold crops, they like the cold weather. They can be grown either started in February, grow out through uh, about uh, June, and then you can start some more in about August to be set out in September or October, and they will grow until basically next spring. If you set them out in real late, they will be some cold crops that you can harvest uh, fresh vegetables from uh, later part later part of the year. Wait a couple of weeks before starting lettuce. Uh, hold off on starting any warm season plants. We're still 80 days from from frost date about now. The last frost in <clears throat> in Murfreesboro is an average of April 15th. The, <coughs> The first frost in, Mur in Murfreesboro is roughly October 15th. Give or take a week or 10 days either side of that number. But those dates are the, are the, the average dates that those things um, have occurred or not occurred. <clears throat> Hold off starting any warm season plants to be roughly 80 days from frost date. Despite undeniable urge to get things growing, you, got, you wait until March the 15th to start your tomatoes. Experience has shown following Christmas with all the discarded trees, free mulch is the best quality this time of year. Take the this Christmas gift to help prevent weeds, preserve moisture. Winter is an excellent time to prune broadleaf evergreens. And as a matter of fact, anytime during January and February, if you have uh, fruit trees, that is the perfect time to do some pruning of your fruit trees. <clears throat> that gives before any of the new growth has started and that usually is uh, the new growth is where fruit occurs is on the new, on the new growth and not the old growth. Excellent time to prune broadleaf evergreens, deciduous summer flower, 
and many trees use selective pruning to remove individual branches, shaping the plant as you prune. If you want, to, want the plant, if it's trying to grow to one side, prune some of those off so that it will move to the, the, hopefully the growth will move to the other side a little bit so it, the shape is a little better. Pruning small trees, branches cut back to a live bud or a branch, or large branches should be removed just outside the branch collar. And if you look, there's a, where a branch comes out. If it comes out this way, there's a little collar right around, right back nice, next to that, uh, the trunk or the main branch. Prune outside of that because if you prune that, you're basically killing anything that might grow. Prune outside of that collar and that will, branch will continue to grow and do well. So outside of the collar. Your winter landscape is a bit dull. Yep, it's going to be a little bit dull unless you've planted some flowers or plants that, that enjoy cold weather. Plants with berries can brighten your winter. Some have an interesting bark and foliage. Great accent plant, contorted filbert, or a Harry Lauder's walking stick. Have you ever seen a, a Harry Lauder's walking stick? It, it looks like a corkscrew. It's so twisted. But they, a lot of people have cut those things and have uh, cured them and they make an interesting walking stick for somebody. Holly is loaded with berries. Nandinas. Nandina is an invasive, so be careful about planting in, uh, Nandinas because birds do love those red berries. They take them and they will transplant that Nandina worldwide. Uh, camellias are still blooming. Mahania will still bloom in a month. You're thinking about adding to your landscape, make sure you use plants that can and uh, add interest in January, February, early March. Consider planting trees, shrubs that have a winter interest. And you see the red here, the shape of the leaves also is an interesting. Uh, hollies have red berries in the winter. Um, also uh, pyracanthus. Pyracantha is an interesting shrub. I've had uh, some pyracanthus that uh, you can train them. <clears throat> it's kind of almost like a vine, but it's not really a vine. And they can be trained to go up a wall or across a fence or something. And they will be interesting to not only the green, but the red berries in, in the winter. Are, it's good. Pyracantha is an interesting, it also has thorns. And they're nice thorns. They're about so long. So be careful. <laughs> now, if you want to keep somebody out, you can plant pyracantha. <laughs> put it on a fence and they will stay out. But anyway, uh, gardening uh, favorite plants for their inner interest, cross vine. A lot of people don't like cross vine. I think cross vine is an interesting plant. It's, it's a native. It, mainly you'll find it, uh, <clears throat> I've had them come up in flower beds, but I've also seen them come up and climb trees. Uh, they do f bloom, believe, believe it or not, and they will grow, grow up to 30 feet. So I've seen them going up trees and it has it, they'll wind up with a, a rather large stem on them sometimes inch inch and a half in diameter loves full sun develops flowers in april through august uh it also is an interesting feature during during the winter you see here's the bloom here's some of the color and again color on the uh, in the winter time cross vine semi evergreen to evergreen and eventually ever purple it will turn purple during the winter, the leaves change from green to a striking reddish purple. <clears throat> this one is a good one. Uh, I've had to dig up a couple of plants because of them. Uh, these are <laughs> bagworms, and you can see it here. Uh, if you start seeing a few on a plant that you have, go out, just pick them off, and throw them in the garbage. Uh, better. To burn them if, if you've got something to burn them with. Basically, <clears throat> this is the this is the mama. She will go out and she will lay eggs, and they that egg will hatch, and it will become kind of a little caterpillar-like thing, and then it will form this bag. And from that point, when it gets into that bag, it never leaves. It will stay there. It will reproduce. It will give out another mama and it will die in that bag. So that's its, that's its birth, uh, that's its uh, hospital 
uh, delivery room as well as its coffin. So you pick all these things off, put them in something, and destroy them. Caterpillars that make small bag out of leaves and needles uh, hang, have eggs in them, wait till they hatch next May, and remove any bags that you see now uh, so that you won't be seeing these critters around next year. You can also find some bulbs that are now, uh, that are out there, and you can break the amaryllis. You can, uh, if you got one for the holidays, you can put it in a pot, and after a few weeks, it will come in and will put up growth, uh, growth, and then it will bloom, as you can see here. Don't throw away your poinsettias. Uh, I have had some poinsettias for about three years. At one time, I finally got rid of them. I got tired of them. But you, they don't just come up and die. They, uh, you can do what they have done here. They made a Christmas tree out of poinsettias and remove the foil, give them a little, a little, some water, and give them some sunlight, and they will continue to grow. Uh, cut back the flowers. Uh, when the color fades, cut that foot back, and if they've grown a little bit leggy, you can kind of treat them like a house plant, cut them back a little bit, and they will continue to grow. Uh, <clears throat> the, uh, in the summertime, they will get basically all green. Uh, if we were a little further south, you could actually go and put them in, the, in your yard, plant them in the yard because a poinsettia is south of here, out of the frost zone, is a tree. It will grow to 15 to 20 feet tall, and the University of Middle Tennessee State University has one that I have seen in their <coughs> greenhouse. It's, uh, it's probably a good 10 feet taller than this ceiling, and uh, the base of it is probably about uh, 12 inches in diameter. So it, it's something that is not, uh, that you can grow, but it's not going to grow here like it will be in Florida. They have, them, they have them in the yards down in Florida where they're growing, and this time of the Almost year. The house. Yes. <laughs> Just about right. They'll grow, 50, they'll grow 20, 25 feet. They're beautiful. Yeah. The yeah. Cut the plants back till they've grown leggy, treat them like a house plant, give them bright light and then move them outdoors uh, in the springtime. If you've got a terrible insect problem, particularly grubs, squash, man, here's cucumber beetle, squash bug, cut worms, potato beetle, many of these burrow down into the ground and spend the winter in a larval stage. You can go in, if you're working in, in your garden outside and want to get rid of some of these, dig it up. Because what they will do is, um, in their larval stage, they will go down into the soil <clears throat> to protect themselves from, from the cold weather. But if you dig them up, kind of reverse that and put them up, up on top, then they're not going to go anywhere except they'll freeze when it gets cold and you've killed them. So you can eliminate a lot of these problems <clears throat> that you may have in your vegetable garden by going out and, and doing a little bit of dig digging at this time of year where the larval stage Will, will die because of cold weather. Pansies, other annual blooming well, uh, usually have periods of warm weather. Well, we've had warm weather, we've had cold weather. We can't make up our mind whether it's going to be summer or spring or winter. Clip off the spent flowers, keep them blooming. Violas can uh, freeze solid and then defrost and just keep on blooming. So that's something we see quite a bit of this year. Good time that you, if you want to take uh, some cuttings, you can do that, <clears throat> and I got three over here. Uh, this one has been cut off too far. You want to find out where the, uh, there's, a, there's a good leaf uh, node, and uh, this one is cut off too close to this. This one is cut off just about right, just a little above that, but not not so like this one because that has damaged this this growth area here. This is too far, and it, that part from about here on up will die and it uh, may cause the, the plant to die even though it has become rooted like this. <coughs> Dip this uh, bottom in into some rooting compound which is inexpensive. You can go and get some uh, uh, soil at um, Walmart, Sam's, uh, wherever, uh, Home Depot, Lowe's, put them in a, in a cup stick uh, down into the ground about an uh, inch and a half or two inches and a little later on 
keep it kind of moist, maybe may want to put a cover over the top of it, you're going to dig down and you're going to start finding some roots. So you can take some plants that you have. Not all plants will do well. Roses do fairly well. You'll probably get 70, 75% of your rose cuttings to, to root. Some, some plants, you, it may be only 30 or 35%. Some are even more likely to root and they may be 90%. I can't really give you a name of all those plants that are there, but uh, that will do that. But uh, you can start doing rooting now, and then by the time it gets to be warm in April or May, then they'll be ready to put into a permanent location. Design and plan spring garden. Well, <clears throat> I talked about this a little bit earlier. You can put in your house where it is here. You have lawn here, lawn here and some other things, so you can <clears throat> start making sketches and go by the uh, drugstore or someplace and they've got some graph paper and you can draw it out basically how, how big you want it, how small you want it, and you can design what you want and put in dimensions of where it is. And uh, you can, now it's a good time to do this because it's a little too cold to go outside, but if you've done a little pre preliminary work before, now is the great time to do your design work. January can include testing your soil. That's one of the things that we really need to do, particularly if we're doing vegetable gardening, maybe even just in your lawn. Because uh, I'm one of those people who never, never, ever, has, has never, ever raked grass and thrown it away. Well, what you're doing is the grass has grown up you cut it off, and you're taking off that part of the material. Well, that grass that is cut off has got minerals, it's got different things in it that the plants need. Leave it there, leave it there, and let it just decompose, and it goes back into the soil so the plants that are there can redigest that, that food that those old plants that are cut off and have decayed and gone back into the soil have done. So leave your grass cuttings. Leave them there. It might look a little nasty for a day or two, but the grass is going to come up through it. That grass is going to settle, dead grass is going to settle back down and decay and go back into the soil. So <clears throat> just leave it there. Um, if your soil is pH, you can go to the extension service. They will give you a little box. Matter of fact, I've got one or two. <clears throat> just so you know what you're looking for. It's a little box that uh, can open up, put some soil in it, and they can send it off to uh, Nashville, and they will, it'll be back in about a week or 10 days. And I th it cost, I think it's $14. It used to be seven, but they doubled the price, I think, for some reason. Uh, everything else is going up, so. <laughs> So anyway, I guess they're just trying to keep up with the crowd. Winter just calls for a good book and a mug of tea, yeah, or a cup of coffee. I don't drink coffee, not tea. So uh, spring garden in January, with a few, few good books and and maybe a catalog or two from the uh, uh, one or two of the, the seed companies. Uh, arugula, this is a spicy salad type thing. Does well indoors. The more light it gets, you can actually grow this in a pot. Lettuce is another thing you can grow in a pot basically during the winter time. If you've got a place where it doesn't get too hot, hot or too cold, uh, you can put uh, some of these plants like lettuce in a pot and put them in a kind of a sunny place and you can go over and pick probably a salad a uh, couple of times a week, believe it or not. Uh, lettuce just grows like a rip. It just grows and grows and grows. So. Indoors, you want to choose a leafy variety over the head lettuce. Uh, grows a little, it's four or five inches. So it's a gourmet, it's, you, can, you can play with it and find out what you want to do. You can actually grow carrots in a pot. Now, I don't know if I would want to grow carrots in a pot in the wintertime or not, but it's something that you can grow in a pot, uh, believe it or not. Uh, radishes the same way, same way as carrots. <coughs> Uh, spinach is a leafy uh, vegetable like the lettuce is. Uh, we <laughs> it will take all kinds of cold weather, believe it or not. We had uh, a demonstration garden over at the Extension Service 
and uh, I think it was three years ago, uh, one spring they decided they were going to plant some uh, spinach. So they planted spinach, and spinach did well, and no one ever went in and did anything with it. They didn't dig it up or anything. Come uh, Christmas time, the, lit the spinach was still there. <clears throat> About a month later, this was one of those one of those winters where we had some freezing rain and snow. Uh, they went out there, and the lettuce was still there. It had freezing rain. It was frozen over. It had snow on it. And about three or four days went back, and the spinach was still there and was doing well. It continued to grow, and it grew out till next spring. So it, you know, <laughs> spinach is a, you can't kill it, uh, it so it, it does well. Swiss chard is another one of them. It's a, it's a cold hardy, but doesn't like, really like to freeze. So if you've got it in a container, you can kind of protect it. Uh, and uh, feed the birds, and I'm through.